Hello students, uh, welcome to video lesson 6-4. In this um, particular lesson, we're gonna be looking at some more specific parallelograms, okay? In our last couple of videos, we were talking a lot about parallelograms. Not only what properties do we know about parallelograms, but how can we use those properties to prove something is a parallelogram? And in today's lesson, we're gonna look at more specific types of parallelograms and some of the properties that they have okay the three things that we're going to cover uh, today are rhombuses rectangles and squares okay some of those may be more familiar to us than others but we're going to start just with definitions of each one and i want you to notice that the start of each definition or rhombus rectangle square start with a parallelogram okay a parallelogram and a parallelogram. So in order to have a rhombus, a rectangle, or a square, you absolutely have to first prove that the shape is a parallelogram. Okay, and like I said, we spent our whole last video talking about how do we show that a certain four-sided shape is a parallelogram. Okay, once you have a four-sided shape that is a parallelogram, then we can get more specific if certain other things are true, okay? So a rhombus is defined as a parallelogram that has four congruent sides, okay? So this sort of looks like a, kind of like a slanty square. So it would look something like, something like that, okay? Where all four sides are the same length, right? And we could mark that with our little congruent marks on here, right? Okay, so all four sides the same length, and that's um, a parallelogram that has all four sides the same length. If uh, you don't have it a parallelogram, it's not quite enough, um, but uh, a parallelogram that has all four sides the same length is called a rhombus, okay? A rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. Okay, so I'm pretty sure we're, we're mostly comfortable with what a rectangle looks like. It just has to have four 90 degree angles, okay, a parallelogram. By the way, if you know the shape is a parallelogram, one box in the corner is enough to show that all of the angles are 90 degrees. Because remember from our previous videos, opposite angles in a parallelogram have to be the same, so that would be 90 degrees. And then uh, consecutive angles have to add up to 180. So if this one's 90, that one's gotta be 90, and then the opposite one over here has to be 90. So if you know it's a parallelogram, you only need to put one box and then you're showing that it is a rectangle. Okay, just be aware that your book could do that as well. But obviously, four 90 degree angle corners um, show also that uh, we have a rectangle. Okay, and then a square is a parallelogram with four congruent sides and four right angles. Okay, four congruent sides and four right angles. So I want you to notice that this entire first part is exactly the definition that we had for a rhombus, right? Four congruent sides, four congruent sides. And the second part is exactly the definition we had for rectangle, four right angles, four right angles. So a square essentially is a parallelogram that is both a rectangle and a rhombus. Okay, it's a rhombus because it has four congruent sides, it's a rectangle because it has four right angles. So if you have a rectangle and a rhombus at the same time, that shape has to be a square, okay? And now, again, I, I'm pretty sure we're all relatively familiar with what a square looks like. Um, in order to see, to fit its definition, we would need to see this, 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 and then, of course, our corners. Again, if you just marked one corner, that would be enough, but in your book, they mark it all four, okay? So we have their definitions of rhombus, rectangle, square. Square sort of has two definitions. One is either by what we know it has or by knowing it is a rhombus and a rectangle at the same time, okay? So I've drawn for you a, a Venn diagram sort of of what we're looking at here, okay? So we know that we have the big world of parallelograms, okay? We talked in our last two videos about parallelograms. Um, there by definition, four-sided shape, both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Okay, within the realm of parallelograms, we have 
rhombuses, right? We have rhombuses here. We have rectangles. And then in their overlap, we have squares, okay? So we have rhombuses, we have rectangles where those overlap, those must be squares, okay? If they both happen at the same time. And all three of these are under the big umbrella of being parallelograms, okay? So uh, if I go back here, our purpose in this video is to look at two properties of rhombuses and then one property of rectangle. Now, if I have a square, right, if I know that a shape is a square, does it have the two properties of a rhombus? Yes, because it is a rhombus. Does it have the property of rectangles? Yes, because it's also a rectangle. So just be aware that all three of these properties that we're going to look at are true for squares, okay? Because squares are both rhombuses and rectangles, so they get all the properties, all right? Another thing to note is that in all three of these shapes, rhombus, rectangle, square, all of the properties that we looked at, um, all four of those properties for parallelograms, parallelogram property one, property two, property three, property four, those were all, or those are all also true of rectangles, rhombuses, and squares. Because again, these three shapes we're talking about today are parallelograms. Hopefully, I have hammered that point home enough. So all the properties of parallelograms are going to apply, and then we're going to get two extra special properties for rhombuses, one extra special property for rectangles. All right, so the first one, uh, which you can find in your books on page 376, if you want to turn there, um, this is what I call rhombus property number one. Okay, your book calls it a theorem. We're not going to call them theorems because we don't really want to have to prove them. We're just calling them properties of rhombuses, okay? So rhombus property number one is about the diagonals. In fact, both of them are about um, the diagonals. So the first property of, of a rhombus's diagonals, which you can see here in this picture, AC and BD, is that in a rhombus, those two diagonals are perpendicular, okay? They meet at a 90 degree angle in here, all right? So in a rhombus, the two diagonals are perpendicular. They have to be perpendicular. They have to meet at a 90 degree angle. If you have a rhombus, then you know that that has to be true. The meeting point of the diagonals has to be a 90 degree angle. That's rhombus property one. Now rhombus property two is also about the diagonals, but it talks about how the diagonals are related to the corners of the rhombus. Okay. So if you have a rhombus, each diagonal cuts both pairs of opposite angles that it goes to, cuts them in half, okay? So in this picture, you can see, for example, here, AC, AC. That line cuts angle A into two equal pieces, okay? So one and two have to be the same. They have to be congruent to each other. Five and six also have to be congruent to each other. Okay, and just a little extra tidbit, because we know this is a parallelogram, they actually have to be the same as each other, okay? So one and two have to be the same as five and six. They all have to be the same, okay? They all have to be the same. The same is true of BD, cuts this corner into two equal pieces, seven and eight. Seven and eight have to be congruent. Three and four have to be congruent. And again, because we know this is a parallelogram, um, we know that actually three, four, seven, and eight are all the same as each other, okay? They're all congruent to each other because the opposite corners of the parallelogram have to be the same, and then they get cut into two equal pieces, so half of two equal things is still equal, all right? So two properties of rhombuses, both about the diagonals. Property number one, they meet at a 90 degree angle. Property number two, um, they cut the corners that they touch into two equal pieces. And of course, we know the corners, uh, the opposite angles are already congruent because of it being a parallelogram, okay? So that is true of rhombuses. Remember, it's also true for squares. We'll talk about those a little bit more in just a second. Okay, and then uh, the one property we have of rectangles, so what we'll call rectangle property number one, even though there is no rectangle property number two, we'll just stay consistent and do this. Rectangle property number one, is also about the diagonals, okay? And this property says that if you have a rectangle, meaning a parallelogram with four 90 degree angles in each corner, then the diagonals 
from one corner to the other, uh, for example, A to C, has to be equal in length or in distance from the other diagonal, okay, B to D. So AC, that whole diagonal all the way across, and B to D, that whole diagonal all the way across, have to be congruent. They have to be equal in length, okay? Now, if we remember that these are also parallelograms, it should remind us maybe of parallelogram property four about what the diagonals of a parallelogram do, right? So the diagonals of a parallelogram, remember, cut each other into equal pieces, right? So A to this midpoint would have to be the same as C to that midpoint. Those have to be the same. And then the same for B and D. And now because we know that A, C, and B, D all the way across are equal, again, we have four smaller pieces that all have to be equal to each other, okay? Similar to what we saw up here with these angles, three, four, seven, and eight. We see with these pieces of our diagonals, A to, I just, I'll just call that M. A to M is the same as C to M, is the same as B to M, is the same as D to M. They're all the same because all the way across has to be the same and they cut each other in equal pieces. Okay, so remember that that's also true of squares. Okay, that's also true of squares. Um, and that's sort of the only extra property we get when we know that a shape is a rectangle. We then know that its diagonals have to be equal in length, okay, or congruent to each other. So if I draw you a square, uh, square, and I draw the diagonals in the square, let's talk about what we know about the diagonals of a square. Okay, so here's what we know. Well, we know that all the corners of the square already were 90 degrees, right? That was 90 degrees, this was 90 degrees, these were all 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Now, because the square is a rhombus as well, right, because the square is a rhombus, we know that the diagonals of the rhombus from property two cut each other into equal pieces, right? So if this was a 90 degree angle and it just got cut into two equal pieces, both of those angles have to be 45 degrees, right? Has to be 45. That one has to be 45 as well. Um, and then we know that that's the same everywhere. These all have to be 45 degree angles because they were 90 degree angles. And then because it's a rhombus as well, we know that each corner angle gets cut into two equal pieces. So we have all these 45 degree angles, okay? The other thing that we know is that here in the middle of the shape, this has to be a 90 degree angle as well, right? So that's a 90 degree angle, and this one's a 90 degree angle, that one's a 90 degree angle, that one's a 90 degree angle. So we have four triangles here. Can you guys see the four triangles? They're all right triangles, okay? They're all like this, right triangles, and these are both 45 degree angles. So they're actually isosceles right triangles. Okay, um, and that we also sort of know because the diagonals, right, are supposed to be uh, congruent to each other because this is a rectangle. And because it's also a parallelogram, we know that each diagonal cuts the other one in half. And so we get these four pieces that are all congruent. Okay, so there's a ton of stuff that we know about a square in terms of things that are the same 45 degree angles, 90 degree angles. By the way, that's all you ever have in a square if you draw its diagonals, is 45s and 90 degree angles. Um, but just based on these properties, there's a ton of information that we know about these different shapes, all right? Now, if we go back and we just look briefly at a couple examples of what you're gonna see in your homework. Um, you're gonna be asked to do this a lot. You're gonna be asked to look at, in this case, a rhombus and figure out, okay, if this is a rhombus, uh, what are the missing angle measures here? Okay, what are the missing angle measures? So in this case, we have four that we're being asked to find. So the first thing I'm looking for is the measure of angle one. Now, I think the measure of angle one is the easiest because it occurs right here at the intersection of the two diagonals. And in a rhombus, the intersection of the two diagonals is always a right angle. So I know this is 90 degrees, right? It has to be 90 degrees, angle one. Now, the 58 up here has to also be the same as this one, right? Because that diagonal from B to D is supposed to cut this angle B into two equal pieces. So if this is 58, this is 58, right? And then the same thing is true down here. 
angle D is supposed to be the same as B, and it's supposed to be cut into two equal pieces as well. So the measure of angle two is also 58 degrees. And the measure of angle three is also 58 degrees. Okay, and now I just have to figure out the measure of angle four. And to do that, I'm gonna draw myself out this triangle. Here I had angle one, which was 90 degrees. Here I had angle three, which I know is 58 degrees. All right, so the question is, can we find this one over here? I think the answer is yes, because we know that the three angles in a, uh, uh, in a triangle add up to 180, right? And we know two of them now are 90 and 58 plus, I don't know, equals 180, okay? And then here's an equation we can use to find the measure of angle four. What we come out with, measure of angle four needs to be 32 degrees, 32 degrees, okay? So you're gonna see a lot of that in your homework, a lot of find me these angle measures that are missing, um, a lot of potentially algebra, right? If there's things that we know are congruent to each other, like angle two and angle three, or potentially um, you know, pieces of the diagonals or the side lengths or something like that. Um, in a rectangle, if you know the diagonals, we can set those equal to each other. A lot of setting equal to each other in this case. All right. Um, if you have questions about any of the algebra or uh, anything like that, please reach out to me at some point. Um, email or phone call, Zoom office hours are all available for you. Otherwise, that's all I have for you in this video, and we'll talk to you soon.